Hello and welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afyesimama. Welcome to my channel. This is the Today in History YouTube channel. Let's roll the curtain back, as I would normally say, to the year 100 BC. On this day, Julius Caesar is born in Rome. As you all know, or for those of you who don't know, he was a Roman politician, a general, and a notable author of Latin prose. Now, I didn't know about the Latin prose bit. Anyway, so 100 BC on this day, the 12th of July, the great Julius Caesar was born. Moving swiftly on to the year 1543, that would be 1,643 years later. Wow, that was a long time. It's a long time later. So King Henry VIII of England is to wed his sixth wife and last wife, Catherine Parr. So that happened on this day in 1543. Now, if you remember from my previous video, I think it was yesterday's video. Yeah, or two days ago. Anyway, you can go back and check. He was excommunicated by Pope Gregory, I believe, the 7th from yesterday, if my memory serves me right. Anyway, so on this day, he marries his sixth and last wife, Catherine Parr. That's interesting. The other lady's name was Catherine as well, wasn't it? Catherine of Aragon. Anyway, moving swiftly on, 1863, on this day, and the place is New Zealand, British forces invade Waikato, home of the Maori King movement, beginning a new phase of wars between Maori and the colonial British. Now, that's a depiction, a painting of the war between the British and the native Maori people of New Zealand on this day. Um, so this is where the defeat happened. Sadly, these were the surviving, some of the people who survived that war. So 50 years later, this picture was taken, as you can see here, on the 1st of April, 1914. So 49 years, call it 50 years later, after the war. Um, yeah, it's disheartening, you know, when um, people come from another country and colonize the country they've come to, and in forbearance of the ethos is not the word, maybe in some cases, because ether sounds um, too much of a positive word to use for negative colonialism, where you suppress the people who own the land, you kill the people, you take over their land, you take over their resources, you know, you change their way of life, you know, and you do that with impunity. But I guess that was the, that was the deal, you know, but it doesn't excuse suppressing the native inhabitants of the land, you know, you show, show them some respect. And I guess in some respects, part on the pond, they did show them some respect. But overall, um, I don't know what you guys think. It was colonialism a good thing or a bad thing or a bit of both? Let me know in the comment section, guys. I have to now move on to the next event on this day. George Washington Carver. Noted scientist, was born on this day, <coughs> and that's him there. He was an American agricultural scientist and inventor. He promoted alternative crops to cotton and methods to prevent soil depletion. Apart from his work to improve the lives of farmers, Carver was also a leader in promoting environmentalism. He was the most prominent black scientist of the early 20th century. So, 
I'm going to show you one more picture. That him there in his later years, George Washington Carver, noted agricultural scientist and inventor, born on this day in 1864. Same year, 1864, Italian painter and sculptor Amadio Modigliani was born. His full name was Amadio Clement Modigliani and he was Italian Jewish. He was a painter, sculptor who worked mainly in France. He is known for portraits. I'm just going to show you some of his work. So that's him there. So he's known for portraits and nudes in a modern style. Show you some of his work. That's a portrait of him. So that's one, one of his works. Macarian. As you can see from here, his work is stylized, generally characterized of the elongation of faces and necks and figures. His art wasn't received well during his lifetime, surprise, surprise, but later found acceptance. Modigliani spent his youth in Italy, where he studied the art of antiquity and the Renaissance. In 1906, he moved to Paris, or Paris, where he came into contact with such artists as Pablo Picasso. I can't, I can't see a bit of influence from Pablo Picasso in this painting. Can you? And then the other person who influenced him was Constantin Brancusi. By 1912, Modigliani was exhibiting highly stylized sculptures with cubists of the Section d'Or group at the Salon d'Automne. Some more works by Modigliani. I think he was very good. Very good. Okay, let's move on now to the year 1887. Mound Bayou, an all African American town in Mississippi, is founded on this day by Isaiah Montgomery. And this is what Isaiah Montgomery looks like. That's Isaiah Montgomery. Okay, let's move on to the year 1896. 1896, Susie Sumner Revels, a daughter of Hiram Revels, the first U.S. Senator of African descent, arrives in Seattle, Washington from Mississippi. A reason, she stated, during the 1936 Washington Pioneers Project interview was, in quote, the man I am going to marry is here. His name was Horace Roscoe Caton. He was a publisher of the Seattle Republican. The two were married on this day in 1896. Susie Revels Caton soon became a leader in Seattle's black community. She was named associate editor of the Seattle Republican and later contributing editor of Caton's Weekly. 1904, on this day, Chilean poet, diplomat and politician better known by his pen name and later legal name, Pablo Neruda, was born. He was born in, let's see, where was he born? It doesn't say, but it says he's an, he was an important Latin American poet, or perhaps the most important Latin American poet of the 20th century. He was also the winner of the 1971 Nobel Prize for Literature. He was born in Peral. I thought I saw that somewhere. So he was born in a town called Peral. So 1904, he's from Chile. He was a poet, diplomat, and politician. Let's move on to the next important event on this day, 1916. Killing spree of Lady Death. 
Well, this is quite interesting. So we've gone from a spy, I think in yesterday's video to, and that lady, that was a lady spy. This is a lady killer. Um, Soviet sniper in the Red Army, Lyudmila Pavlichenko, is the most successful female sniper in history, having killed 309 German soldiers during the Second World War. Wow. Born near Kiev in the Ukraine, Pavlichenko worked as a metal grinder in a munitions factory before entering the army. Now, there's a story that goes that when he was about 10, he was teased by a boy that um, because she's a girl, she's not as good with um, games, you know, and um, all the stuff, you know, the stuff that boys do to tease little girls. And she wanted to prove this young boy wrong, and she beat him at this game. And then, with, in the case of the army, the Red Army, she got into the army, she passed the test that was required to get into the army with flying colors. But obviously in those days, even now, there's still that skepticism as to whether um, a woman can match up to what men can do. So she was shy initially when she joined the army, didn't want to kill no one, you know. And then a sniper hit her friend, a colleague, right next to her. The guy died. And this woman went berserk. She was so angry and she now, you know, started honing her skills even better, became much better. And um, the rest, as I say, is history. She, as I said earlier, killed 309 German soldiers during the war, during the Second World War. And she is the most successful female sniper in history. So you see what anger can do, you know. All that needed to trigger this lady was the death of her dear friend. And um, she was all over the place, all over the, the Germans who called her Lady Death. 1942, on this day. Brazilian political activist Beatriz Nascimento was born her parents were Rubina Pereira do Nascimento and Francisco Xavier de Nascimento. She was born in Aracaju, capital of the northeast Brazilian state of Sergi Sergipe. Beatriz Nascimento was an Afro-Brazilian academic and activist. She was an influential participant of the Black Movement of Brazil from its beginnings in the 1960s until her death. Through her academic research, she evaluated the importance of Quilombos as autonomous spaces for people of African descent during the colonial period and challenged the political environment and racial policies of the governments toward Afro-Brazilians. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, my take on this story is a lot of us in the West, a lot of African Americans and a lot of African people, a lot of um, Europeans and uh, Asians, basically everyone else apart from, that's those in the English speaking world now I'm talking about. We know very little about people who speak other major world languages like Portuguese and Spanish and French. You know, I noticed that when I was in Spain for about a week, many, many years ago, how we seem to be running different worlds, you know. Um, we hardly know anything from these other cultures, perhaps obviously because there's a huge language barrier. And so, you know, it's interesting when you dig a bit deeper and you go into other countries and other ethnic nationalities and you find that the struggles they've had are similar to the struggles that we've had in the English speaking world as well. You know, we just don't know enough about these people to, um, to talk or write or, you know, to showcase them. Anyway, so, so this is one case, you know, Beatrice Nascimento, never heard of her until quite recently. 
Okay, so um, yeah, she was born on this day, and obviously, like I said earlier, she was influential in the black movement of Brazil from its beginnings in the 1960s. Okay, let's move on to the year 1949. A man called Jones patents the starter generator. That's Jones there for you. He actually had two patents registered on this day in 1949. One, like I mentioned earlier, was for the starter generator and the other one for air conditioning units. So that's Mr. Jones for you. Mixed race guy, patents the starter generator and the air conditioning unit on this day in 1949. We move on to the year 1956. Shanghai Hove was born on this day, on the, not on this day, but on the 9th of February. Pardon me. I'll dig out the information that's um, relevant to today, the 12th of July. He died on this day. Unfortunately, four years or five years ago in 2015. Now, a bit more about this guy. He's a Zimbabwean novelist, poet, and essayist who explored the lives of ordinary people in his homeland under British colonial rule and during President Robert Mugabe's post independence regime. Hov was the son of a polygamous local chieftain. He was educated at Roman Catholic Missionary Schools, Guelu Teachers College, the University of South Africa, through its external learning program, and the University of Zimbabwe. Both taught at rural schools in Zimbabwe and later at several universities abroad, abroad meaning outside Africa. Um, he also served as an editor at Mambo Press and Zimbabwe Publishing House, and was the inaugural president of the Zimbabwe Writers Union. After enduring several years of surveillance and harassment, Hove, a fierce public critic of Mugabe, fled Zimbabwe into exile in 2001. He eventually settled in Norway under the auspices of the International Cities of Refuge Network. Hove's best known work, the novel Bones, followed a rural woman in colonial Rhodesia so, Colonial Rhodesia is what Zimbabwe is now. So, I did mention a few videos um, ago that uh, Zimbabwe was called Rhodesia, and it was named after Sir Cecil Rhodes, who was a British colonial, um, colonial person, if you like. Okay. So, um, so, he followed a rural woman in Colonial Rhodesia seeking to learn the fate of her son who left the farm to join a band of liberation fighters. The novel won both the Zimbabwe Book Publishers Association Award for Literature in 1988 and the Norma Award for Publishing in Africa the following year, 1989. So that's him uh, who died on this day. Um, I'll mention his name again. His name is Shanjurai Hove. He died on this day. In 2015. Looks like a cool guy, cool dude. Um, big critic of um, the former president, uh, late former president of Zimbabwe. Um, I don't know much about Zimbabwe, but from the few Zimbabweans I've interacted with, I hear that Mugabe started off very well. Apparently, the most educated president on the planet, obviously, before he died. Um, and the literacy rate, interestingly, in Zimbabwe is one of the highest in Africa. So there must have been a very, very strong um, emphasis on education in Zimbabwe, possibly from colonial times, and which has probably endured until today. So it's quite interesting. Um, well, perhaps we're just copying the president, the fact that the president um, was, had all these degrees, you know, um, that was um, their leader showing them how to approach life, I guess. Could be a bit of both. But anyway, um, this is not about um, Mugabe, but about um, Shanjurai Hove, who died on this day. Oh, I should finish um, what I was saying about um, Mugabe. Yeah, so apparently he started well, in, implying that he didn't end 
so it ended up so well. And towards the end of his presidency, um, there were lots of demonstrations and riots in Zimbabwe. People were killed. The main opposition then, must have been five, six years ago, Morgan Shangri was injured during one of those demonstrations. You know, so there's been a lot of turmoil in Zimbabwe. The currency has been devalued. Um, people are really, really suffering in Zimbabwe now. It's it's sad. It's sad. You know, it's one of those countries in Africa that would have done very, very, very well. You know, but um, well, let's move on to the next um, news. Well, the item on this day, 1957. This was the day that the U.S. General, U.S. Surgeon General, I might add. Pardon me, Leroy Bernie connects smoking with lung cancer. So on this day, 1957, that connection was made. 1975, the island nation of Sao Tome and Principe was granted independence from Portugal. So that's a map of Sao Tome and Principe and Let's have a look at some pictures. Absolutely beautiful, as you can see. So that's where it's located, just off the West African coast. Say West Central Africa, if you like. So Tome and Principe. Beautiful. So, exactly a year later on this day, Barbara Jordan becomes the first African-American to deliver a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Jordan also gave a keynote address at the 1992 Democratic Convention. She was a Congresswoman, Congresswoman Barbara Charlene Jordan, was also the first African-American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives from the South in 1972. Prior to entering national politics in 1966, Jordan became the first African-American elected to the Texas Senate since Reconstruction. Jordan became a professor at the University of Texas at Austin after leaving politics in 1979. She also served as chairperson of the U.S. Commission on Immigration Reform from 1994 until 1996. Jordan was born on the 21st of February 1936 in Houston, Texas and died on the 17th of January, 1996, at Austin, Texas, at the age of 59. On this day, 1997, young Malala Yousafzai was born. Now world famous, she's a Pakistani activist for female education and the youngest Nobel Peace, Nobel Prize laureate. She's known for human rights advocacy, especially the education of women and children in her native Swat Valley in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, northwest Pakistan, where the local Taliban had at times banned girls from attending school. Her advocacy has grown into an international movement. And according to former Pakistani Prime Minister Shahid Kakan Abbasi, she has become the most prominent citizen of the country. Malala also graduated from Oxford University after completing her philosophy, politics and economics degree 23 days ago, eight years after being shot by the Taliban after speaking up for women's education. So congratulations, Malala Yousafzai, on your graduation. Congratulations on your fight for women's education which I support 100%. There's nothing wrong with a woman being educated. You educate a woman, as the saying goes, you educate a nation. And as you know, there's a direct correlation between a woman's education. Well, I guess you may not know, you're probably hearing it for the first time. There's a direct correlation between a woman's education and her children's education. And obviously, if there's a knock-on effect, then that also affects the wider society as well. Um, the less educated a woman is, the less likely her children are going to be uneducated and more likely that crime in society from that generation would be higher. 
You know, the more educated uh, a person is or a nation is, the lower the crime rate, the higher the standard of living, you know? So basically we, we go from a, a virtuous cycle to a vicious cycle. So that's the difference between being educated and not being educated as a general rule, you know, in most cases. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule, but generally, when you educate a woman, it's better for society overall. 1998 on this day, Zinedine Zidane. World Cup final takes place at the Stade de France, Saint Denis. Zinedine Zidane scores twice as France wins first World Cup. And the beat the mighty Brazil 3 0. So that's Zidane there, Zinedine Zidane. That's such a cool name. That's him lifting the World Cup on this day in 1998. Last but not least, Prince Albert II, the only son of Prince Rainier III and Grace Kelly, became prince. He assumed the throne of Monaco. I guess he became king because he was prince before and now he's a king, presumably. But Monaco. Now Grace Kelly, his mom, was an American actress who died in a car crash. Now, that's, the story goes that she suffered a stroke while she was driving and her daughter was beside her. Her daughter tried to control the car to no avail. As you may know, Monaco is very hilly. The roads are windy, the roads are narrow. So in that sort of um, principality, um, it's difficult in that sort of terrain, I might should say, it's difficult to control a car um, successfully. So the car plunged 120 feet, and then um, Chris Kelly died from her injuries. Thankfully, her daughter survived. Anyway, we'll end it there. Um, this is the longest today in history that I've done, actually, 27 minutes. That's incredible. So... Yeah, that, we'll wrap it up there today. Thanks, guys, for dropping by. And do not forget to like this video if you like my content. And then also, please don't forget to subscribe so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Once again, guys, stay safe, and I shall see you tomorrow for another edition of Today in History. Bye, guys. Bye.